This is happening now because there's more air in the balloon to be let out. Um, prior to COVID, um, the market cap of crypto was something like 200 billion, 300 billion, if you believe that number. Um, it had gone up to 3 trillion on paper, briefly, in the fall of uh, last year. But it's difficult to understand what that is other than speculation, other than gambling. Because cryptocurrencies are not really currencies, they're more securities, unregistered, unlicensed securities. And they're weird securities in that there isn't a product or a service that generates a revenue stream. So it seemed fairly clear to me last year that um, what was really happening was people had a little extra dough, um, perhaps from the stimulus checks, uh, perhaps from the easy, you know, the, the low interest rates the Fed was offering, and they were gambling with it. Um, there's nothing necessarily wrong with gambling, uh, in my opinion. I think a little like gambling isn't necessarily bad. However, uh, gambling to the tune of three trillion dollars, or 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 supposedly thereabouts, um, does have one wondering what happens if and when it unwinds. Um, the other problem, of course, in crypto is is the fraud. Um, <laughs> um, these are unregulated, unlicensed uh, securities, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, including uh, SEC Chair Gensler. Um, but they haven't really been regulated, certainly not consistently. Um, therefore, you know, when things start to fall apart, there really isn't any, we haven't codified in law sort of what's supposed to happen and there's no one to appeal to. There is no one to sort of figure out where to get your money back. Um, you end up trying to go to the exchanges and the exchanges have technical problems. The reason that there's so much fraud in cryptocurrency is that you've been able to get away with it. Um, this is an unregulated uh, market, more or less, uh, or at least loosely regulated. And you have all of the opportunities that you don't have in the regulated market to for shenanigans, as they say, um, there are something like 20,000 cryptocurrencies, which if you think of them as, as I do and many others do as unregulated and licensed securities, that's more securities than there are in the US stock markets in total, right? There's something like 7,000, I think. So they, this is just exploded. These are the equivalent of the, most of the smaller cryptocurrencies are the equivalent of penny stocks from the 1980s. Uh, John Reed Stark, former SEC official, has spoken about this um, publicly, and I've spoken with him uh, for the book that we're writing. Uh, but he's, it's just the same thing. You know, you, you literally replace the word security with token. You call it a token or a coin or whatever, and you issue it. People don't know who actually owns the majority of the coins. Um, what, one of the most important things for people to understand about cryptocurrency is that most of the volume that you see on the exchanges is fake. It doesn't exist. Um, academic uh, papers have uh, studied this extensively, have seen something somewhere between 70 and 90% of the volume on these exchanges just doesn't exist. It's what's called wash trading. Uh, because you can set up as many wallets as you want, you can trade back and forth these uh, so-called currencies to make it appear as though there's a market. What you're really doing is, of course, at almost no cost to yourself, just trading the back and forth. And then when real players come in to actually buy them, you dump and they're left holding the bag, so to speak. So there's opportunities for fraud in that sense. Um, there are rug pulls and scams um, it's every variety of fraud that you see in the rest of the world, just sort of uh, amped up uh, fraud to the moon in crypto. We don't know how many people have been hurt in cryptocurrency. Um, it's difficult to find hard numbers. Uh, if you believe the industry, then something like 20% of uh, adult Americans have at one point owned cryptocurrency. I'm, my suspicion is that number is a bit high, um, but even if it were only, say, 10% and they've lost money, um, some of them have lost a lot of money. Some of them, if they bet too much and were, you know, unfortunate in the timing or whatever, 
have lost effectively all of their money. And you hear about those people. Unfortunately, as Jacob Silverman, my colleague who I'm writing the book with about this, as we interview people, we're coming across horror stories of people's, people who have lost their life savings, people who are um, you know, considering suicide or have committed suicide. Um, they've lost family members. Um, you know, this is a, this is the pernicious part about things that, to my mind, resemble Ponzi schemes and multi-level marketing schemes, is that there are real consequences for these games. Um, everyone is having fun until they have to go home, the lights turn off, no one wants to clean up. Um, there are going to be people who, who risked too much and, um, and lost everything. Um, my guess is the scale of this is certainly millions of people in the United States alone, potentially tens of millions of people, if you believe that 10% or 20% of the country, 250 million people, 10% would be 25 million, 20% would be 50 million. It's a lot of people. Most people have lost very, very risked little and lost little, thankfully, uh, but many others have lost everything.